it is this sort of preponderance in the FTSE to, to, to oils and banks that, that has been the, uh, the, the, the headwind over the last couple of months. And if that starts to turn, um, then you know, I, think, I think the FTSE could, could get some proper momentum going again. But One of the other catalysts in the backdrop can be strength in sterling. And we've certainly witnessed a clawback trade for pound versus the US dollar. I mean, greenback's been declining against many currencies. Does that continue and does that prove to be a headwind as uh, we've got some of those dollar owners sitting there? Traditionally, yes, Karen. It's, it, that's always been the case. I mean, the, 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 you know, the market's always, the FTSE's always rallied when sterling has weakened and, and vice versa. Um, you, you, theoretically, yes, it should do. 80% of the FTSE's earnings are overseas, so therefore when sterling strengthens, you would expect FTSE to struggle. We've seen slightly sort of less correlation to that over the last few months, uh, and it's coming back primarily to that, that preponderance of the, of the oil sector and the, uh, and the banks, and that you know, when it's far more now relevant where the yield curve is trading, far more relevant where growth expectations are than necessarily sterling per se. But I, I, you're definitely in the past that's been the case I think perhaps a bit less so now I think the the oil price announcement uh, uh, or the oil uh, production announcement and the impact it's had on the price has just reminded us all of um, the risk of recession because clearly the Saudis believe that growth is slowing otherwise I guess they wouldn't have cut the output here as we as we focus on recession risk at this stage you've done a little bit of a compare and contrast with 1998 walk us through the logic of that comparison and what that tells us if anything about what what's likely to unfold this year well i think the comparison with 1998 is you know the the, the banking crisis that we've seen over the last uh, month you know it's very much about liquidity not about uh, solvency uh, obviously the two do merge together at, 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 at points. But this is very much about a liquidity crisis. And I think the parallel here is perhaps LTCM, if you recall that going back to 1998. Um, what the Fed were able to do in 1998 was very much contain the LTCM crisis. If you remember, 14 banks formed a consortium to, to basically step into LTCM. And I think it's that comparison that I think is quite interesting. If this crisis has been contained, then you, what we saw in 1998 was not uh, GDP slowing as a result of tightening lending standards, which is what the concern is at the moment. We actually saw GDP accelerate, and GDP started to accelerate in, in 1999 on the back of 1998, despite the LTCM crisis. NASDAQ doubled in, nine, uh, between, uh, in the 12 months following the LTCM crisis. And I think the parallel here is if the Fed is more constrained about what it can do to interest rates, it may not be the NASDAQ that doubles in the next 12 months, but inflation may be a lot more difficult to contain than the market is currently expecting, especially if the Fed is more constrained about what they can do. So what you're saying is you think the market could be wrong as to where we are at in terms of terminal rates, because the, the dialogue last week was that, hey, we're pretty much in touching distance now well, when it comes to the terminal rates. It's probably right about terminal rates because of this, because of the constraints that the Fed is under now because of the banking crisis, the regional banking crisis. What I think is not necessarily contained is inflation. And actually what this may, this banking crisis the, may entail, the unintended consequence of the banking crisis may be higher and more persistent inflation because central banks are unable or unwilling to necessarily take the action on interest rates that they would have done prior to the banking crisis this month. And so the unintended consequence could be inflation is higher, just as the unintended consequence in 1998 was putting fuel under the Nasdaq.